it's a week after the election and I woke up this morning to I think sad, really sad. And it's you know, it's a good week already. And I can't seem to um get a hold of my emotions or my 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 thoughts clearly enough to even write a blog. So I thought my thoughts are as muddled as they are. Um, they're just muddled and confused. And so I just didn't. I tried several times to actually write my thoughts. But they're so conflicted. Because I feel so conflicted. Um, a friend of mine asked me yesterday. Well, what do you tell your daughter about the election? Because it's a week later and it's. The dust seemed to be, the dust seems to be settling like, like atomic fallout, you know, like, like radioactive ash. The fallout seems to be almost as, um, as deadly as the event itself, because now that Mr. Trump is choosing his cabinet, it's really bringing home who he is. Because the one thing I've learned after all these years is that when, when someone tells you who they are, you've got to believe them. And... Um, Someone said, "What do you tell you? What do you? What do you? What do you say? What do you say to your daughter about Trump?" And I don't know yet. You know, other than my daughter thinks she's an, he's an idiot, but you know, goodness. Um, how do I reconcile the American process um, of this extraordinary country? with the result that it has given us this time and the fact that either I believe in the process or I don't and consequently I have to accept whatever that outcome is but I gotta tell you this is a bitter pill to swallow because for the very first time I think when the when the God I almost said the verdict the verdict okay just that Freudian slip the verdict no when the choice became apparent I had for the very first time and this is gonna sound kind of weird I gotta tell you but I felt black in America maybe really maybe for the first time Time. You see, I was born in Trinidad, in the Caribbean, and I didn't, I didn't grow up knowing what it is to be a minority. Okay, I, and who we are in those foundational years, our our experience in those foundational years, define who we are. I grew up as a majority. I grew up self-governed. I grew up not measuring my worth against white people and, 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 and coming up short the way American culture has um, dictated to people of color. This defines people of color in the United States. Other places too, but in the United States. So I didn't come to I, I didn't come to racial prejudice early on. I learned it later, but it wasn't in my bones. It wasn't part of my DNA. It wasn't part of my my core essential self. So I've 
I've, I've often carried myself in the world the way white people carry themselves because that's just, that's just, um, um, when you are part of a majority, when you are part of a dominant culture, you don't think of yourself. You just think of yourself as being. There's a level of racial entitlement that you bring to the table that isn't even malicious. It just is. And so where I came from, I just was. I didn't think of myself every day as being black. Black in relation to what? White? No, no, no. You know, there are white people. There, there were Indian people and Chinese people and Syrian people and there are all kinds of people where I came from. Anyway, I digress. Um, but in the light of Mr. Trump's um, victory, I think I felt I have felt for the very first time fear. What it must be like to be afraid. I don't come, I'm, I don't move through the world afraid. I, it's not my MO. But I, I'm aware of fear. I'm aware of fear in me now. I'm aware of fear for um, my safety. The safety of the people I love. The safety of my child. The safety of my friends of color my my gay friends, my lesbian friends, my trans friends, my my black family, my Muslim family, my um my Latino friends and family. And the thing that angers me, angers me about this is that Mr. Trump has intentionally gone about playing on our fears and has given permission to frightened people and bullies are frightened people. And he seems to have given the green light to cowardly people. People who have been living in the shadows, who have known on some level that they're prejudices and their um, fears belong in the shadow. But now those folks are out in the light. Those folks have been given the green light to come on out and that's the shit that I'm scared of, is that, you know, a particular sector of this country, which as we saw on the map is much bigger than any of us realized, okay? That they've been given permission to just act out. Come on out of the shadows and what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, when Bannon is, when Bannon is his right hand man, 
don't know. Because it's, what does it do for women? My daughter, myself, women, women. What an awful thing this man seems to have done. And yet, you know, and now we're in a waiting, we're in waiting mode. We're in a waiting game. We're waiting because we don't know what he's going to do next or who he's going to appoint or how that's going to impact us. And it, I believe it is certainly going to impact us very directly. And the way in which the world is moving, it's going to be instantaneous because that's, that's the, um, that's the era we're living in, okay? This shit's gonna hit and it's gonna come back at us right away. Not gonna be a lot of delay. So, we're waiting, I'm waiting. And while I'm waiting, I pray and meditate and try to come to terms with my own fears because I can't live here because then he's one and that can't happen. So where is my peace in all of this? Where is my peace in this? Where is my peace? Because I'm an advocate of every day being lovely and I had a hard time finding lovely, which is so unusual for me, you know? Um, <sighs> I don't know what to do with this. I was committed to knowing what I know and not knowing what I don't know, which is my motto anyway, but I think that, I think what I know is that when I, when I don't know what I'm doing, I step into my faith and my faith says to me that it's going to be all right. And what all right means is that no matter what, life itself is on a trajectory toward good, toward light. When I stand in that, when I stand in that, I know that Donald Trump is the answer, okay? Because this shit has got to blow up on some level because so much of it does not work, has not worked for all the people all the time true justice, true equality, um, fairness, um, all of the tenets that this country is built on. The great promise that has yet to be met. Um, this, um, the extraordinary constitution that does not apply to every American not even remotely. The sins of this country on which this country was built, that is the foundation that will not hold. It won't hold this country in the way in which it is demanding to expand without revisiting the foundation itself. And for that, some of this must crumble and we may need 
need to repair and rebuild uh, from a foundational level. I know that none of this is an accident because Donald Trump couldn't be in place where he is um, without us calling him forth. And he is not the other. He is us. He's all of our fears. He's all of that, all of that stuff that we are in this country, in America, that lives in the dark. And I am part of this body politic and this malaise, this dis-ease that we are seeing in Mr. Trump is part of the body politic. It is part of us. I don't divorce myself from him in that way. And like any festering that is under the skin, it the only way for it to heal is to have it rise to the surface. And this putrefaction is rising to the surface in order to be lanced, exercised. Um, cut open, drained. All of this hatred and resentment and racism and sexism and the misogyny and the all of the isms, all of the fear, all of the shame that is this country is being embodied in this man. And that's the good news, right? Because we are seeing it now. We're seeing it, we're smelling it, we are tasting it, okay? But I fear we have some dark days ahead. And it scares me. It scares the shit out of me. Because because I'm a smart girl. <laughs> and this shit is scary. I also know that none of us on this planet at this time are here accidentally. We're here because we're meant to be here at this moment in history. And that means that we are equipped and came prepared and fully equipped to take on this moment of history. And it will give birth to qualities in us that we aren't even aware that we have yet. I think that Donald, Mr. Trump, is ultimately going to be the is going to be the ultimate unifier because already I'm aware within myself that I'm not just black on one side and my Latino friends on another side and my gay friends on another side. Oh hell no, we on the other side will band together. And that will be a coalition of all kinds of looking people, sounding people People with different beliefs, but with one purpose, which is to battle the darkness and to triumph over ignorance. <sighs> for our survival and for the survival of this planet, because where America leads, the world follows. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But it's like a dream. I keep waiting to wake up. I keep hoping to wake up. But I fear there are dark days ahead of us. It is a time for spiritual warriors to rise up. To rise up and take Take your positions on the battlefield. 
because I think that's the only way we're going to fight this. That's not, that's not the only way at all. That's one of the ways. That's one of the ways. The other way is that, is that we have become an extraordinarily apathetic society because we're, we're fat and lazy in America. We've not had any kind of real turmoil on our soil of this nature uh, that goes beyond race, class, uh, culture, that goes beyond those things. This, this man goes beyond those things. We've not had that kind of um, conflict on our soil, I don't think, ever. We've not had a despot leading us. I think we're about to. He's not a big man. He's a little man. Little men can be dangerous. So, I think Lovely, the face of Lovely may be very different from here forward. The face of Lovely may be the face of warriors, spiritual warriors, political warriors. The face of Lovely may be the face of extraordinary courage in the face of adversity like we've never seen. Um, lovely may be doing it Stepping up, standing up, even if you're scared. Face of lovely may be standing up, not just for myself, but for my, my brothers, my sisters, my Muslim brothers and sisters, and my gay and lesbian brothers and sisters, and my trans sisters, and my... It may be standing up for my Latino friends and my Latino housekeeper and my little actors that I know. And it may be standing up in the face of family who makes racial jokes and I don't think those are to be tolerated anymore. We don't have that luxury. I don't know what lovely is going to look like from here forward, but I know I'm willing to seek it out every day, every way, and requalify it. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I pray for this nation, I pray for us all. May God have mercy on us and may God bless and keep us in these united states of America.